as we know, for thousands of years, Israel has had a complicated relationship with her neighbor to the north, uh, with Lebanon, going back to the time of King Solomon. And certainly recently, Israel has had a, a very troubled relationship with Lebanon. This past week, as many of us have been following, there was an explosion in Lebanon, a series of explosions that were very damaging. More than 5,000 people were injured, at least 135 were killed. Tons of chemicals that had been confiscated a few years back that were left at the port exploded, uh, creating all of this damage. Now, of course, we know that Israel has been officially at war with Lebanon for decades. Lebanon has been under the thumb of Iran-backed Hezbollah for a very long time. We also know that Israel, just this past week, offered humanitarian aid to the people of Lebanon. And the leadership of Lebanon has refused that humanitarian aid. Israeli doctors are actually begging the leaders of Lebanon to allow people to be able to receive medical attention from Israeli doctors, and they're trying to find workarounds to try to be helpful in this um, and in other ways. You may also have seen that a decision was made to light up the city hall in Tel Aviv with the lights that depict the flag of Lebanon. And while some people thought that that was inappropriate, others felt that this was an appropriate display of humanitarian connection. In fact, the mayor of Tel Aviv uh, wrote the following, humanity precedes any conflict and our hearts are with the Lebanese people in the wake of the terrible disaster that befell them. I also want to quote what Prime Minister Netanyahu announced. A very great disaster occurred yesterday in Lebanon. We are ready to provide humanitarian assistance to Lebanon as human beings to human beings. If I were to ask you to think back on uh, various historical developments, you would probably be able to identify a number of situations where when people are allowed to respond to one another as people to transcend political realities, often they respond and want to respond uh, with a great deal of, of humanity and compassion. Unfortunately, politics often can eclipse humanity. But we see that people are often willing to try to transcend political differences in order to be responsive in ways that are simply ben adam a one human being helping another human being. And there are examples of that uh, throughout history. I read a very nice novel by the author Ta-Nehisi Coates, who wrote a book called The Water Dancer about the challenges and about the, the horrors of slavery and the way that people treated each other um, in, in extraordinarily inhumane ways for generations. And yet at the same time, uh, there were people even during these darkest times who recognized the humanity of the other despite race and who were willing to reach out in humane ways. We also know, of course, of people who were willing to risk their lives to help Jews during our dark times, people of other backgrounds and other faiths. I want to point to a particular passage in this morning's Torah reading that identifies that God wants us to be treating each other in humane ways because that is what God does. So God, through Moses, says to the Jewish people, Umaltem et orlat levavchem. You should cut away the thickening of your heart. You should circumcise your heart. It's an interesting image. You should no longer stiffen your necks, for your God is the awesome God who shows no favor and takes no bribe, but upholds the cause of the fatherless and the widow and befriends the stranger, providing him with food and clothing. So in the spirit of the children of Israel being asked to imitate God, God is saying, I care about humanity. I care about those who are marginalized. I reach out, and by extension, uh, you should also reach out. In Israel, in recent months, there have been a number of songs that have been written by famous Israeli artists about the COVID pandemic. And one song written by Yishai Ribo is called Keter Melucha, 
coronating God, providing God with coronation. And so in the song, he meditates how during the spring, we went from one parasha to the next, and we got deeper into the pandemic. And then he turns to God and he asks God, what do you want us to understand from this? What are we supposed to get out of this crisis? How can we maintain distance and draw close in this pain? And then he says to God, I want to live you. I don't want to be alone. I want to have this strong connection. What do you want us to learn from this? How can we learn to come together in this apartness? Very interesting play. We are apart, but how can we come together? Until we can acknowledge your keter melucha, until we can give you your crown. So the idea that God wants us to transcend the political, that God wants us to be mindful to each other as human beings, that's not a new idea. This is something that goes back to the biblical tradition and something which is expressed even today in various creative ways. So I just want us to think about um, how we're responding to each other. This is a time of enormous polarization. We are turning to each other sometimes and saying, what kind of Jew are you? What is your political leaning? Where do you stand? Who are you with? And these may be important conversations to have, but our biblical tradition, which extends for centuries to the present time, asks us to look at each other and to see another human being, the way that our brothers and sisters in Israel are looking at their brothers and sisters in Lebanon and saying, how is it that we can help? And there's actually a beautiful play on words in the song, Keter Melucha, the crown of God's uh, coronation, has a definite resonance with the word corona, which in Latin means crown. And I asked uh, one of my teachers who presented this, is that intentional? And he said, absolutely. The, the artist is definitely playing on this. During this time of corona, how can we restore God's crown? And the answer is we restore God's crown by being more humane towards one another. So perhaps this time is precisely the time for us to restore God's crown by being more humane to each other. Shabbat Shalom.